Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of the Free American Hour. I'm your host, Clay Douglas. I've just sent out an email. If you haven't got the email, if you didn't get it, you send me a note telling me to add you to my list, and I will. The uh, post that I just put up on thcministriesofarizona.com and uh, added to the Free American News called the most dangerous men in America. Outlaws? Really? Folks, our declaration, the, the gentleman I'm going to be interviewing today is William Gein. He is with ALAPAC. That's the Americans for Legal Immigration Political Action Committee. He's been making a difference. And he is under attack, as I have been for the last 20 years. You know, folks, I want you to kind of remember something. Our Declaration of Independence Constitution was crafted by very intelligent, well-read men. They were landowners, farmers, ranchers, publishers, and prolific writers. All were outspoken individuals educated by history and tales of tyranny through the Bible. They read the words, the books, and the words of men from the age of Aristotle. It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain the thought without accepting it. They were communicators who spoke out against the tyranny of England's Rothschild back plan for one world government. The sun never sets on the English Empire. They gave us the most well-crafted plan of government's governance in history, a republic if we could keep it. They were also anti-government extremists rebelling against the lawful power of the crown of the church. Dangerous men in the eyes of administrators, civil authorities, tax collectors, and bankers. Outlaws. Now years ago that term, the most dangerous talk show and the host in America was used by President Bill Clinton in reference to my friend Bill Cooper. All right, let me see if I can get William Gein up. Okay, ready to roll when you are, Clay. All right, we're on and we're live. I've just kind of gave you a, a slight introduction. You, you, I have, I have kind of unofficially added you to uh, the the substance of my latest article called "The Most Dangerous Men in America." William Gein. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm on the list, am I? I think so. According to the information I got from you, vicious. Illegal alien supporters have attacked the Alapac website two days in a row. It's clear they're trying to disrupt our interrupt our operations at a critical time when our momentum is building rapidly in the states. And and well, yeah. they've been doing that to me too. I mean, they they listed me as uh, uh oh Clay Douglas. You know, he he, he was uh, he was uh, they listed me on the NAACP website. To try to, mm -hmm. to try to keep people from going to the tea parties because, oh, if you go to a tea party, you must be a racist. 
Well, let me address that, but let me also uh, tell your listeners that uh, the audio quality is going to be a little different from here. You're going to hear a lot of stuff in the background because right now I am at the North Carolina General Assembly, and I am here seeing something that no one in uh, our lifetimes has seen before. Uh, Republicans at 12 noon today are going to be sworn into control of the North Carolina House and Senate for the first time in well over 100 years since Reconstruction. Incredible. And... And I am here, and Tea Party groups are here, and immigration enforcement groups are here, and the North Carolina GOP Chairman Robin Hayes is speaking on the stage. I am speaking on the stage. We are here, and we are going to broadcast uh, my speech by podcast to the nation later this afternoon, because all across America, we have an opportunity to provide the kind of change that the American public really wants to see. But it's only an opportunity play, and it's only going to happen if we connect people with the lawmakers in their states, in Washington, D.C. We have to connect the people. And that's what's happening around us today. I'm waiting for the video guy, and then we're going to where the stage is going to be set up here outside the doors of the General Assembly. Um, you know, and these people who are attacking the Alitac website and trying to smear my name, your name, you know, everybody's saying, I, I want to address that. Everybody, even those that oppose us on issues, should be celebrating the peaceful and civic activities of people like Ed and the Tea Parties and all these people out there. Anybody that is trying to malign people that are voting and participating in elections and lobbying lawmakers as some type of potential Tucson murderers are, are guilty of something. Uh, it's not a crime, definitely uh, a moral, uh, ethical uh, abuse that I think we're going, to, we're going to have to figure out what to do about that. We all support free speech, but when you start trying to just defame Americans that are doing things the right way and associated with, you know, child killers, it's wrong. It's wrong to do, and it needs to stop. And, you know, we need to at least begin by speaking out against that at every opportunity. You know, it, 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 it's the, the furthest thing from the truth. You know, neither I nor any of the any of my returning guests are racist we you know our constitution protects all religions so I don't care if you're Muslim I don't care if you're Christian I don't care if you're Jewish you're covered under the constitution and and I just I just mentioned that our founding fathers you know, they they were they were anti-government extremists rebelling against the power of the crown and the church, weren't they? They were dangerous men, also. Well, and, and it's hard to deal with somebody that is being so overtly duplicitous that is accusing people of using hateful rhetoric to try to incite people to violence when that's exactly what the people making the accusation are doing. Okay, when the Tucson incident happened. What Homeland Security and everybody else in the game, including Sheriff Dupnick and MoveOn.org, and all everybody in the game of politics should have been a appealing for calm and b focusing on factual the facts. That's not what happened. What happened was Department of Homeland Security's memo or their Fusion Center memo that was released or leaked or whatever you want to call it tried to incite people and was filled with propaganda and lies. They are trying to incite people and God forbid that they succeed in confusing someone enough to retaliate against a conservative or somebody like Beck or Palin to create some type of tit-for-tat exchange in this country. The situation could completely spiral out of control quickly. And so we sort of did a Sarah Palin. We waited before releasing anything. We observed the facts. We waited for them to come in. And when they came in, we appealed for calm and we appealed for everybody to focus on the facts, which is Americans in the best interest of all of us to do that. Uh, and it's just a shame that people with, you know, big titles inside our own government seem to be, um, you know, trying to agitate people with uh, false, you know, defamatory stuff. Uh, and, and I want to thank Sarah Palin for introducing me further to the term blood libel because um, it's a very appropriate term 
uh, to use. When you try and accuse people of being hateful, mean, and racist, and associated with shooters because of their politics, because of what they vote for or what they lobby for, you're really approaching the boundaries of trying to stir people up to violence against them. And that's inappropriate. Um, and that's what they're, the other side's doing. And, you know, play people are already, you know, I'm always going to call on that. I'm always going to, to point that out to people when they do it. William, they, the, within one hour of the event, the ABC, ABC News was calling me on the telephone. Do you know this guy? Do you know this guy? No, I don't know. This guy. I never heard the name before you. I just heard, the, you know, on the news about uh, 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 about the congresswoman. Why would you be calling me? And then, of course, Dupnik's Dupnik's thing came out, trying to point the finger at talk show hosts just like me. Well, and they're just trying to get you into the article, Clay. That's how, you know. Clay Douglas said he didn't know the shooter. Wink, wink, you know. There's your name in the Tucson story. Um, you didn't have to have anything to do with it. You didn't have to say anything hateful in your life. They're just going to stick you in there. And listen, when it comes to anybody in a country being responsible for uh, deaths and injuries or mass murder, the number one the political culprits for that in the country are the people that are supporting illegal immigration and thwarting the enforcement of our existing laws, which would protect American property, jobs, classroom seats, and lives. That's the only, you know, real tragedy. Almost, I read that, right? Um, Clay, I'm going to have to only spend a few minutes with you this morning, and I apologize. That's all right, sir. You know, I always try to be available for your show as much as possible. It's just today, uh, with it being a very historic day and me going on stage here in about an hour, um, you know, things are a little bit crazy. But that, you know, that's no that's no problem, William. Uh, please send me a, a, a copy of your of your speech, and I will put that up with this uh, with this radio show and on my website. Well, I'm going on stage in an hour. I guess I better write it pretty soon, then, huh? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> William, William Gein, thank you. And and let me tell you how much I personally appreciate the kind of work that you're doing. I mean, you you are giving out the right kind of message. We're not we're not racist. We're not we're not. You know, if I was if I couldn't get a job down in Acapulco, I'd be walking up here with those folks to try to be able to feed my family. And well, Clay, I appreciate, well, I appreciate you and your listeners and those people out there that are trying to get people informed with the facts about what's happening and trying to get people engaged in the political process, people of, of all parties, walks of life, all races, uh, that care about being an American. I appreciate your work on that, and I hope to rejoin you again sometime soon. All right, sir, and, and the links to uh, this show are up on the site. You might let uh, your listeners know about shows like this. I'd appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much. Will do. Take care, Clay. Bye-bye. All right, that was William Gein speaking, and might as well take this opportunity. First of all, first of all, let me do this. Let me do this. Uh, we'll um, get 46 minutes remaining. My phone number here. If you want to call in, I'd like to. I'd like to talk to you. If you've got my email, I'd like to know what you thought about it. I'm going to talk about that email. I'll share that email with you. That story, that article that's now up on Free American. The phone number here is six four six nine one five eight seven seven four. That phone number, by the way, folks, only works for this hour of the day. My other numbers, if you want to call here, if you want to make a donation, if you want to order some books, if you want to do something, that phone number is 520-413-2397 or 505-908-9498. Now, while I'm on live on the air here, the phone number to call into is 646-915-8774. And are we broadcasting on everything? All right, looks like it. And, uh, okay, what else here? What else here? Let me, uh, let me just check on everything that I've got going here. Okay. 
Yes, uh, guest uh, number two on um, Talk Show says uh, legal immigration to go back to the pre-1965 immigration with 90% of legal immigration quota from Northwest Europe. Yes. We're kind of, uh, we're, we're certainly getting a lot more Mexicans, blacks into this country than white folks. What happened, to, what's happening over in Rus Russia? I'd like to know that. Okay, guest number three asks, what is wrong with being racist? If you're Caucasian, Negro, or Mongoloid, your parents were racist and chose their mate based on, uh, on race. I have no problem. I am a Texan. I'm proud to be a Texan. I'm white. I'm proud to be white. My family was raised, I was raised in a Christian household. But I don't have any hatred or animosity to anyone born under a different color or a, going under a different religion because your constitution, our constitution, folks, our constitution gives you gives you the right to worship as you please there is no state religion so to attack somebody because they're of another religion because they're a different color than you I think is flat wrong just flat wrong and guess number three, you want to know why Clay Douglas is only has about half a dozen people who listen to his podcast? Well, I've got a few more than that, sir. And because all you ignorant pricks do is try to attack me on this chat room, you can kiss my ass. I don't care about you. You don't bother me. You you know, there are people, there are hundreds or thousands of people downloading my show. I check on it. Inflation. Uh, you know what? You guys. No, I got no problem uh, believing that whites are God's chosen people. I don't think the Jews are. I don't think they are. Uh, you people are so ignorant. I just want to pay attention to you. I help with all of you. Talk among yourselves. Ignorant. I got no, you know, sorry, not going to be a racist. Not going to suck me into that. Talmudic Christian identity crap. You know, yeah, I don't have any problem believing that the whites walked across the Caucasus Mountains and became Caucasian, that the Israelites walked across the Caucasus Mountains. I got no problem believing that. That doesn't mean just because you're white you got the opportunity or the, the right to be ignorant, to be murderous, to be to kill other people. No. You know, you belong in the days of Custer. To hell with you all. Okay. What's this? I don't know what to do. Okay. Hey, did I lose my chat here? Yes, I lost my chat. Okay. Okay, and uh, we got another chat room here. We got uh, both sides are supporting illegal immigration. If they were not, we would get laws. We got laws. We got laws. They're not enforcing it. I interviewed Border Patrol agents down in uh, San Diego years ago when I was working with uh, Charles Collins and uh, running for president. And. Uh, He said, we can stop this. We can stop the illegals. We can stop the drugs. They won't let us. That's because the government's in the drug business. They want you getting high. They want you to providing fodder for the prisons. They want you staying stoned. They want, and, and, oh, 
but you don't have to do the illegal drugs. We can give you the Valium. We can give you the Prozac. We can give you all this. We can take care of you. Yeah, yeah, we'll take care of you. All right, what else we got? I'm going to get to my thing here. And, uh... Hello, caller from 907 area code. Hello, Clint. It's uh, Tim. Hello, Tim. Uh, first time caller of uh, Papa Bear One on your show here. Papa Bear? Uh, how's everything going? Well, pretty good. Pretty good. I I missed the beginning of your show, so I I, I just started listening. I didn't know how long I got into. It. I assume you guys were talking about the illegal immigration. Yeah, it's uh, in North Carolina. In North Carolina. Okay, hang on just a second here. Let me see. I got another call coming in. Let me uh, let me bring him up on the conference. All right. Hello, nine one nine, area code. Hello, nine one nine. You calling? You still here with me? Okay. All right. Well, anyway, Pop. But what's on your mind? The, the William Gein came on. He's at. Uh, he's speaking at a conference. Uh, the the Republicans have taken over North Carolina, and Tea Parties are there. Al the Alapac supporters are there, and uh, there uh, he's going to be talking about the illegal situation there in North Carolina, and that'll be posted later. Okay. Uh, I was, I'm up here in Alaska, and. Uh, uh, we, there has, I mean, most, most probably the last 25 years that I've lived here is, you know, immigration has been pretty calm, but in the last 15 years, they've built numerous FBI sites, um, uh, FEMA camps, uh, they buckle down on the Ill illegal immigration. Now, I don't see it that often earlier when I lived up here, but lately it seems like, you know, before it was maybe, you know, agriculture that they were taking jobs, but now it's truck driving, construction, uh, all the restaurants and, and service industries are prime. And it's not just Latino Hispanic. You know, I, I, I want people to understand that there's people from around the world I've never even heard of, countries that come up here that are in these positions. Seems like you'd, so, be, uh, you'd be getting some kind of... of uh, let oh, me, I'm sorry. Let me ask you this. Are, are you getting any influx of Russians or Chinese into... Uh, Absolutely. I kind of suspect I kind of suspect Or, suspected or, or you know, Eastern European countries, you know... Uh, Uzbekistan and I mean stuff I can't pronounce it, but yeah, Georgian, Ukrainian, to the point where they've spent you know well in the billions in in the office. I mean they're putting an infrastructure up here in Alaska. Are they are yeah. they setting up are they setting up FEMA camps up there? Is there is there a, a, you know, a homeland security? A, uh, basically, yeah, uh, FEMA camps. Absolutely. Less, uh, in fact, uh, we they were using Homeland Security. I don't know why, but they were using them. Uh, they pulled them over. They were parked in my front yard. Uh, they pulled this guy over who apparently was in a gang. So they were using Homeland Security to do traffic stops with you know gang bangers and you know. Um, which I found odd. Something that the cops would do or the drug unit would do. They had Homeland Security. Now, what about the uh, what about any of these FEMA camps uh, that I uh, just had William Gein's? I mean, I'm sorry, I just had uh, uh, William Lewis's uh, wife on my show the other day, Debbie Lewis, and uh, they were they've got their films out about the FEMA camps, and I've heard rumors that there was a big facility up in Alaska. I mean, is that going to be, is Alaska going to become our Siberia here? You know, it's funny you said 
that, you know, I have a lot of friends in construction that built those camps. Now, I don't know what they, they didn't know what they were building, you know. There is a camp in Fairbanks that's supposedly two million people. I don't, I don't know if they thought they were building a camp when they built it. I mean, they were building a structure, and then someone else came in afterwards and, and put in a, a fence and towers and Constantine wire. You understand what I'm saying? Papa Bear, they, so they, they, they have, they have the towers, the guard towers. They're putting them down here in America on Walmart parking lots. Yeah, I saw that on YouTube, yeah, I saw that. I haven't seen, I look out for that stuff, you know. Um, but uh, right down the road, I live right next to Elmendorf, and uh, uh, down the road is Fort Richardson, and they have a base there that holds maybe 500,000 people, which I know is a FEMA camp. It's Homeland Security trucks everywhere. It's You know it's a camp. The other one, I don't know. I don't live in Fairbanks, so I, I can't can't tell. And a lot of that stuff is they have security now on the highways up north by Wainwright and, and the Isleson Air Force Base. And uh, so you can't get on the road that takes you out to that camp. It's not like right off the highway like it, the camp at Fort Ridges on Glen Highway here in Anchorage. Uh, as far as Chinese, I heard something on um, Coast to Coast uh, yesterday or last, either last night or the night before about um, people that had uh, built tunnels and that they figure there's tunnels right now underneath the, the Bering Straits and they're bringing people, Chinese and Russians, into Alaska that way. I don't know about that, you know. I know there's a lot of underground military tunnels on the base. I don't know about one underneath the Bering Sea, you know. But I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, we're pretty capable of taking whatever we want in this country. It's, uh... Well... All right, listen. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. I appreciate you listening. And, oh, thank uh, you. I enjoy your show, and I enjoy uh, the doctor and everyone on there. I like getting up to listen to your show every morning. All right, sir. Thank you very right. much. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Bye -bye. Let me see. Uh, let me see what we got here. All right. Okay. Again, number calling number 646-915-8774. We got, uh, we got talk show up too, but, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, they got two, a uh, couple of provocateurs that stay on there, just harass anybody that's trying to listen to me, anybody's trying to do the chat room. So, uh, we'll just keep them all muted so they don't interfere. And, um, yeah, no topic, just a comedy hour. Screw you, guest number three. <laughs> you guys are such cowards. You're such dorks. You're just nothing but provocateurs. And But this is what, folks, this is what has happened. This is what has happened. Now, you know, my article up on the website, I talk about my friend Bill Cooper. He was called the most dangerous talk show host by President Bill Clinton. Bill Cooper was the author of uh, Behold a Pale Horse. We were both on Worldwide Christian Radio via shortwave. Bill and I knew that the IRS was just a collection agency for the bankers and there was no law. I was one of the few talk show hosts that Bill liked and respected for trying to get to the truth. Bill was not an Alex Jones fan. We were communicators, writers, students of history. We met several times at his almost inaccessible home at the top of a small hill in Eager, Arizona. The last time we met there in 2001, we discussed merging my Free America magazine and his Veritas newspaper. Bill was more paranoid than usual. He had reason to believe the government was coming from him, for him. He had sent his wife and child out of the country. Two weeks later, he was dead. Bill was police was posing as drunken teenagers were partying near his house when he went out armed as usual to run them off. They killed him. 
he was not the first, nor was he the last, or will he be the last. Gordon Call was called a tax protester and ambushed. He fought back. His son, Yuri, still paid for his arrogance after Gordon was killed and burned to death in the house in Arkansas. Randy Weaver was targeted after refusing to snitch for the feds, trying to shut down a white organization called the Aryan Nation. His wife and son were killed supposedly because he sawed a quarter inch too much 